Hi there, my name is Will and today I'm going to show you how you can set up monitoring for Kestra with Prometheus and Grafana. Being able to have greater insights into your Kestra instance can be super duper valuable. Now we already provide dashboards built in as you're already familiar with on the dashboard page, but these only tell you so much of the story. Being able to monitor even more, including the health of the instance, as well as maybe tasks and workflows happening is also really beneficial. With this in mind, that's where we can use Prometheus and Grafana to extend Kestra even further and give us richer insights. You may be wondering what is Prometheus and Grafana and why do I need these to extend Kestra? Now, the best way to put it is that Kestra has an endpoint called Prometheus and this is just generating data constantly it refreshes every now and then of various things happening in the instance. Now, Kestra doesn't store this, it just sends it out on the endpoint. And so Prometheus listens to this and it will then store it in its time series database, which means we can then make visualizations using Grafana to be able to see what's going on, spot things that may be a little bit off and so on. So what really happens is Kestra is generating data Prometheus captures that data and then Grafana can then visualize it for us in a way that we like. So let's jump into getting this all set up and create some of our own visualizations as well. Now jumping right in, we're gonna open a brand new VS Code terminal. Uh, this means we can now spin up our Kestra instance. Now this is just a Docker Compose file I have in here, uh, which is just got the latest version of Kestra. So let's spin that up. Perfect. So now I have Kestra running and we're going to leave this running in the background so it can start generating various different stats so that when we set up Prometheus, there's some data for it to start collecting. Okay, so now we've got Kestra running and we can see it's working over here. I'm going to just minimize this uh, terminal a little bit and this is where the next bit comes in. So I've created a folder here called Kestra Monitoring Demo call this whatever you like. But in here, we're gonna to need to add a prometheus.yaml file so we can configure how Prometheus is gonna work. Now, uh, I've just got this O1 here, as you can see, and the only thing you're gonna to need to change uh, is the target. Now, this is where it's gonna look at Kestra. Now, I mentioned earlier that Kestra, as we can see, uh, is always emitting um, Prometheus data. And so I'm running Kestra on localhost 8080, but if I go to localhost 8081 slash Prometheus, I'll be able to see a bunch of data. And so now I've gone to that endpoint, we can see it's producing tons of data and we can see that, yeah, a lot of it's just the, the sort of a key value pair, you could say. So here you've got your key and then you've got your value and we can then visualize all of this using Grafana a little bit later on. So we wanna make sure that our configuration from Prometheus can access this endpoint, which is running on port 8081 and it's slash Prometheus. So we can see here it's looking for slash Prometheus as the metrics path, so that's all sorted but we do need to set the target up. Now, this is where you'd put your host name in. In this case, because Kestra is only hosted locally for us, we are going to put in uh, host.docker.internal because we're gonna be running Prometheus in Docker as well as Kestra. And if we put local host, they won't be able to see each other. So uh, this is just something you need to do on your local machine. But let's say you've got this hosted in Google Cloud, you would put your Google Cloud public IP in here or the public address to your cloud instance. Uh, and then obviously the key thing is the 8081. Kestra itself is running on 8080, but some of this other stuff's running on 8081. So bear that in mind. And if you're running on different ports, sometimes I run on 8082 or 8084, that normally means that the data is on 8083 and 8085 and so on. So bear that in mind. Now that we've got that set up, we can now uh, open a new terminal and in here we can create our Prometheus container and then open up Prometheus and see it working. So here I've got my Docker command. It's gonna simply just run a container and detach it so it's gonna be running in the background. We're gonna be running it on port 9090 uh, and then we're gonna be making sure that we've got our YAML configuration inside of that container as well. Uh, and then obviously using the Prometheus image. Now, uh, make sure you're doing this in the same folder as the Prometheus image, or at least you change this uh, path here to match where you've got that YAML file. And then when we run that, we'll see that it's gonna spin up the container. And then now if we go to our terminal and go to localhost 9090, we'll be presented with Prometheus. Now we can actually check this is working by going to status and then targets. And we can see here, it does see the Prometheus endpoint in our Kestra instance. Uh, and we can see when it scrapes, scrape duration and so on. 
so now with this in mind, we can start putting some expressions in to be able to view some of the data in Kestra. So here I can actually type Kestra in and I can see some of the data that's being produced. And I can see here worker underscore job underscore running. And here I can press execute and see that no jobs are running. And I can visualize that on a graph as well if I would like. So if we go to Kestra now, I've got a couple of flows ready to, to kind of help us with this. Uh, I've got sleep here that's going to, uh, you guessed it, it's going to sleep. Let me just uh, make that a little bit more visible. Let me make this a little bit smaller. So here you can see I'm going to sleep this task for five minutes. So I can easily run this twice maybe. Uh, and hopefully when we do that, we'll see that now we've got, if I go to the dashboard, we'll see in here that there are two tasks running. So now if I run this inside of Prometheus, but you've got to give it time for that endpoint to update and you can configure in your configuration how regularly you want that to update. So I can now see it's running too. And we can actually see in the time series database uh, that it is actually, if I set that to like five minutes, you can see that it has now bumped up but I can then maybe, you know, cause more havoc and run that again. Um, so now we've got, or maybe, or we'll just run it load so we can see now when this reruns, give it again, give it some time to sort itself out. And let's just make that a little bit smaller. Um, it does again, you've got to wait for Prometheus to capture that data. It does take a few seconds. Um, and there I can now see it's running five. And if I come back in five minutes, it'll drop back to zero. So. This is really cool. Now you might be wondering, why do I need Grafana to do visualizations if I'm doing visualizations here in Prometheus? Now, that's kind of it. <laughs> this is all you can really do with Prometheus. There isn't a ton more here. So this is really useful being able to just check that things are working. So we've just been able to validate that this is in fact collecting data from Kestria, but Grafana gives us a lot more control and a lot more variety in what we can do visualization wise. So let's now spin up Grafana, connect this, uh, connect it to Prometheus and then create some new visualizations. Okay, so now I'm going to spin up another container but this one's gonna run Grafana. So this is gonna run on port 3000. Uh, it's gonna be called Grafana and it's gonna pull the latest Grafana enterprise image. So now when I run this, we can see it's given us a container ID and now I should be able to go to my terminal and type in localhost and then this time 3000. It's going to ask us to log in. Now by default, the login details are admin admin, like so. It's going to suggest that you make a new password. We're going to skip this for now. And once we're into Grafana, we're going to be presented with a much nicer looking interface than Prometheus. Now let's connect Prometheus to Grafana so we can start visualizing the database. So let's jump to connections on the left hand side here and then click on data sources. Now we don't actually have any, so let's add one. And as you can see, Grafana isn't just limited to Prometheus. Uh, let's say you've got other infrastructures, uh, other things running in your infrastructure that you want to monitor. You could bring that all into the same Grafana dashboard or build multiple dashboards in the same Grafana instance. And then that allows you to be able to visualize all your different tools at the same time. This isn't just for Kestra. So here you can look at Prometheus, but you can also look at other time series databases. Uh, logging is another common one as well, uh, and so on. You can also look at SQL databases and a bunch of different enterprise options too, if you're into that. Now let's click on Prometheus. And then here we're gonna have to do the same thing we did with Prometheus and use that host.docker.internal to be able to connect it. So let's just remind ourselves what we used. Here it is, like so. And we're gonna type that in, but we're gonna obviously change the port number to the one that Prometheus is running. And I also need to add HTTP at the start. Now, now we've done that, I can leave everything out as, as a default. We're not gonna do anything else. You can actually say how regularly you'd like it to scrape and how long to query. But again, we're gonna just click save and test. And as we can see here, it has successfully been able to talk to Prometheus, which is a good sign. But if I was to change this to localhost, it wouldn't work unless I had it hosted properly with its own domain name or IP address. Now that we've done that, we can now head over to dashboards and now I can create a new dashboard. But a dashboard isn't very useful if you don't actually add any visualizations. So with that in mind, let's click uh, add a visualization. We're gonna use Prometheus. And here we'll be able to see a lot of the stats that we saw in here, a lot of these stats. And in fact, some of these are completely not very related. Some of them are just about Kestra's health. Uh, but if you wanna look at stuff specific, 
specifically in Kestra, where you can see everything that starts with Kestra underscore. So here we can see a load of different things going on. It's producing a lot of data right now. If I give that a refresh, we'll see that some of that data has changed. In fact, we're nearly at the end of our five minutes. So in fact, if I go back in here, we'll see that some of those five minute tasks are ending uh, and there's less going on. So yeah, there's still, still a fair whack of things running, but if we give that a refresh, we'll see that they are in fact starting to wind down a little bit, which is uh, what you would expect when it only is told to run for five minutes. Anyway, let's create a visualization. Now we've used that previous one, Kestra worker job running, which I quite like, um, but Grafana makes it really nice for being able to visualize what's going on here. So if I want to search everything that starts with Kestra, I can do so. And as you can see here, it gives me everything really nicely, tells me what sort of, uh, type of visualization I should use, whether it's a gauge or a counter or something. Now we wanted to use, uh, I can't remember, uh, worker job running. So we've got worker job count here. So I can select that, for example, I can select that to be a stat or a gauge uh, and uh, I can click one query. And here you can see, actually, let's play that as a number. Um, Actually, a gauge is quite nice. I quite like to gauge. Uh, here I can see exactly that we've had five running total, but if I was to change this to, uh, what we were just doing. So that's this one. I can then run that query and see that we've had five total. So very, very nice. Something else I can do is I can give it a title. So this is currently just called panel title, but I can name this um, tasks running. And then just like that, I have a fully functional uh, visualization for my dashboard. So here I've selected the Kestra worker job running. Now there are no, <laughs> there's no jobs running. So let's just go back to that wonderful sleep task and we'll just execute that three or four times just to get that up and running. And now we can see there's four of them running. If I go to Prometheus, I'll be able to see that four of them are running. Now, if I click run query in here, we should hopefully see in here in just a second, hopefully recognize that there are four running. I can save this dashboard. I'm gonna call this dashboard Kestra, press save like so, click save changes to the dashboard. And now I can go back to dashboards and I can see that we have four tasks running. But the gauge is really cool because it knows from the database we've had a maximum of five run before. So uh, if you maybe run maximum of like a hundred at a time, it's quite good to see like your capacity, for example. So I can then also resize that, make that a little bit smaller. I can easily click save. It's going to save those changes and I can easily add another visualization. Let's have a look at other metrics that we could maybe explore using. Uh, we could have a little look in here as well um, and see it, what there is. Now, one of the cool things about Prometheus is that we can collect metrics generated from tasks. So this Python task that I'm just gonna execute right now is going to generate a bunch of different metrics. Um, it's gonna generate how long it took to run this task. So now if we look at that final execution, I can see in the metrics, it has generated one called duration. And if I now refresh this page and search for 0 0.34, we're gonna see that it has in fact found how long it took to uh, run that duration. Here you go. You can see it. it's generated that 0 0.34 there. And we can see that it's produced that data in the Prometheus logs. I can run that Python thing a few extra times just to generate that metric a couple of extra times, but it will be under the same thing. Okay. So I've now got the, uh, the query here for being able to access the Python script for specifically the duration metric in seconds. And we can then see that plotted here on a time series. I could also go see it as a stat. If I go back to Prometheus, we can see that it was 0 0.388. So we can see that that was working successfully. I can now save that to my dashboard, go back to my dashboard. And now I have it here very nicely. So now I'm actually gonna see if I can try and make this a time series. So here, if I press save and go back to the dashboard, we can see that it is in fact running it on the time series. Now, if I was to run this again, and we run them not at the same time, we can see that this is gonna produce us the metric. Let's see what it is this time, probably a little bit different. Here we can see it took 0 0.37 seconds. And again, Prometheus will hopefully tell us the same thing. If I now run this, we can see that it is going to run at 0.37 seconds. So now if I run that again in here, I can see that it is running gone down a little bit, we can see over time. And then hopefully in Grafana, if I actually edit this to only show us the last 
15 minutes. We can see all the data plotted, much easier to visualize now. In fact, I'm gonna edit it even more. We'll change it to the last five minutes because uh, everything we're doing is very, uh, very real time, back to dashboard, so much easier to visualize. Now with that in mind, what we can do is uh, run this again and I might actually modify the Python code to make it run even longer. Great. So here it's generated a much quicker time. So hopefully we'll see that in uh, in here in a second. So now what I'm gonna do is mess this up by telling it to uh, do a time.sleep for a whole two seconds. This will really mess up the data now. And we can actually see in Prometheus that it is uh, running as we would expect. I can see that, oh yeah, there we go. It's definitely messed it up. So it's now 2.34 seconds. And we can actually see in Grafana, if I give that a refresh, it's got our load time. And then uh, we'll see in a second that it's going to get a surprise bump up of much bigger. <laughs> there we go. Now, all of a sudden, those tiny little differences don't seem so bad, uh, but we can visualize exactly what's happening in that Python task. Uh, using Grafana, which is really, really handy. And let's go back and run some of those sleeps again. So we've got the sleep, sleep, sleep. And then I'm gonna go back to the Python metrics one again. And in here, I can set this to now be one second of delay, um, just to see if we can get some, generate some stats. We'll now see that this is uh, having a great time as it's like getting confused. That's 1.34, much better. Now let's run it again at 0 0.5, like so. Okay, there we go. It's generated our metric. So now if we refresh this, we'll see it's got three tasks running at the same time, which is great. We can see that we've got uh, the 0 0.235 is still the highest. We've got four flows running at the same time now. Lots of cool things you can do here. Now this is showing us for all Python tasks. If I was to now take this code, put this in a new flow called Python metrics two, keep it really simple. I could now execute this one as well. Uh, and I can then execute the other one again. So we'll go back to that one. And we'll, this one we're actually gonna change to be a 0 0.2 second delay, 0 0.2 second delay. So now when I execute that, we're actually gonna see in the dashboard that when it refreshes every five seconds, I'm gonna give it a manual refresh. We'll see that in fact, we can see now in Prometheus, there are now two things on the charts. <laughs> and then the same in Grafana, I can now see the maximum duration here generated for both of them. And I can see the number of flows has now gone to a maximum of what looks like five. So very, very cool. So this can prove really handy because now I can see max when the maximum duration has been hit. And so if I'm expecting this task to maybe take, well, 0 0.3 seconds seems to be about average. Now I can see that it's gone up to 2.35. Something must be going up there, whether that's something an external service it's talking to is having some big delays or whatnot. We can actually see here that it is in fact dropping down um, so it's quite useful to be able to monitor this and we can also set up other alerts and other things like that to help us spot that. So to summarize, what we've done here is we've created a dashboard in Grafana using data that has been collected in Prometheus from Kestra. And what we can see with the simple visualizations that we've done is we've got some flows running and we can see we've got six running at the moment. And we've been able to track a metric generated from a Python script. And we can see what that maximum value is every time that this collects data. So we can see that the data uh, has you know, it's gradually gone down as we stopped running it. And we've run it in two different flows and we can track those separately as well. So this is just a start of what you can do with Grafana. If you found this interesting, let us know in the comments below and we can make more content on different visualizations you can do with Grafana. Um, so we can show you how you can get the most out of Kestra. Hopefully you found that useful and you're gonna start using Grafana and Prometheus to monitor your Kestra instance. Let us know in the comments below what you think of this and if you're gonna start using this. And again, remember to give us a star on GitHub.